So anyways, yeah, I look like a fucking weirdo creep Mario Luigi knockoff because I use the wrong grade. Mm-hmm. That happens. Because my the fucking thing doesn't actually say that. So, That'd be the only thing that I would leave to if I ever messed up the rest of it. It's so hard. I'd so be hard. leaving the rest of it. Before, before. when I used to, because so there's there's a couple times where I have had just the mustache, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, yeah. Anyways, I, it was too thin. Like I didn't, I didn't, like yeah. I, I, I cut it too close. Yeah, yeah. And so this time I've been letting it ride up higher and it's actually formed a lot better. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the F Word. I am your host, G. With me is Vass. What's up? Hope everyone's having a good time. You're tuning into the best podcast you'll never know, the F Word. I made a mistake last week. A tagline I came up with and I fucked it up. I said- Never know or never hear? It's never know. Yeah. Because last time I said never hear. That's the same thing. No, it's You're not. You're splitting hairs. No, no, no. Because cause it's this. Because uh, the best one you'll ever know and never know, it sounds better. Sure. And someone has suggested go greatest. And I'm like, no, that's too much. That's that's way too much. Yeah. Too We're much not credit. there yet. No, not yet. <laughs> um, hope everyone is having a, it, having a good time. I was really stoked to see that we had a spike in listenership on Life and Hip Hop. Got up to uh, almost 40 listeners. Whoa. Yeah, on a single episode, which is like, it's a pretty big one. We did yeah. get, the highest one we've had so far, I believe, is 76 or 80 on yeah. the very first Infinity War deep dive. Yeah. Uh, and then it trailed off, but now it seems like, you know, we're averaging now about 26 from before when we were at 19. So all you new listeners out there, you guys are, so, I'm so happy that you are liking what we're putting out. Mm-hmm. Um, it means a lot. Um, and... I hope everybody out there is trying new things and looking to try things like a podcast or music or whatever because every little increment of growth mm-hmm. is actually a really like to me it's a soup is a really big deal and to say and I and I hope it's the same thing for you guys so uh, it's kind of been like this thing of now it's like sweet just just even one person extra a week makes me super happy but that one in particular. Because again, it was Robert's first time on a mic, so it was like I messaged him. I'm like, "Dude, our episode's doing real good," and so he was super excited. Nice. Also, Kanye West's album actually came out today. Oh yeah. And so in that one, when we recorded it almost a month ago, I had said it's coming out on the Friday because we had recorded it on a Monday, and it was supposed to come out on that Friday, and then it got pushed back. Mm. So it comes out today. Yeah. It's five or six songs. That's his whole album. That's so it. Far. This whole thing for five or six tracks. Listen, Kanye, I know you did that whole rollout with yourself and Pusha, which Daytona is an awesome album, and yet Kid Cudi. But you got like I, people need to start going back to the dirty dot. Like get back to twelve at yeah. least. Get ten out there. Yeah, and especially if you want people to still buy it. Yeah, uh, I haven't listened to the whole thing because Spotify mm-hmm. for some reason doesn't play in the background anymore like it used to. Uh, some new update to Android, so I have to go into mm. the permissions. But then when I go into the permissions, there's too many things uh, yeah. that it's to asking me to permit. And I'm yeah. like, you know what? I'll just wait for it to come out in Google Play. <laughs> because uh, I listened to Edward Snowden on Joe Rogan, and now I'm like, I'm really creeped out by the amount of data being collected. Yeah. It never really bothered me before. I still don't, even if I know how much is being collected, like, okay, go for it. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't affect me on my day-to-day, like of what I yeah. what I put on there, even like those apps, certain ones that like ask me for certain permissions, like, okay, go for it. I don't know. Like, I mean, well, the worst case is identity theft. Which eh. is a shitty case. True. Let's put it that way. It's a real, real shitty case. Like, True. And uh, when I was... And the thing is, listening to before that episode, I knew that they're listening. I knew they're I knew they're collecting data. Yeah. Right. I listened to a lot of like a lot of other podcasts and they talk about this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But for some reason the fact that Snowden was talking about it and breaking it down, like to the fact that even your Well, he's he's phone, the inside man, right? Yeah, so he even, has even your idea. phone turned off. 
Get still. Collects data. Yeah, you have to remove the SIM. No, it's the battery. Okay. He's like the only, but, but yeah, you, you can't take batteries phones, off now. Exactly. And so now it's like this thing that's just going to collect everything. It's, yeah. it's wild. It's wild. But again, I'm, I'm kind of like you with you. Aside from the identity theft, theft thing, which is awful. Yeah. Like really, truly bad. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing really that I'm concerned about, you know? Yeah. Um, the only shit thing is that it kind of takes away. I was listening to, uh, so another episode I was listening to of Rogan uh, with Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he was talking about how, like, I don't want these companies to show me what I want to see because it takes away the excitement of actually exploring and discovering these things. Yeah. Like, if I speak about one thing, and then it picks it up and it starts funneling it through my feeds. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like now you're just overstuffing it. Whereas before, I'd have to go out of my way and look for things, and then I'd come across something and there's a discovery about it. Yeah, I get where he's coming from. I'm also not a scientist, so sometimes I just want my shit. Yeah, you know. Um, housekeeping, housekeeping. Uh, Sask Podcast Network. We are a part of. Yes, your best one. one yet. The best one. Uh, also, Connexus is a sponsor, main sponsor of the Sketchman Podcast Network. Um, hashtag Money Talk, MoneyTalk.ca. I'm really trailing on these ones. Yeah, I had a really good idea for one, but then we just get got started. Oh well, and uh, save it for the next time. Sure, I'll keep saying that. Sure. <coughs> Checking. Oh doesn't look like my volume's too high, but I also don't want to talk too much. Um, what else was I going to say? Do you vote? You voted, right? I voted. Yeah, all of Canada voted. A bunch of people are not happy. A bunch of people are happy. Just the way that it goes. Mm-hmm. I found that really the only good thing about this whole uh, election now mm-hmm. is that when I look on Facebook, yeah, I know who the fucking crazies are. Like... This is the funny thing. So we just spent a minute talking about security. Yeah. Of sorts. And these people worry about security. And here they are spitting, excuse me, all their fucking beliefs. They're just throwing up all over Facebook. Yep. And the best part is that they get zero likes compared to some of their other stuff. Right, like someone yeah. posts something of their kids, and they'll have like twenty, thirty likes or whatever. Yeah. Then they put a political post, and it's like one person crickets. Like, yep. Well, no one wants I, to be either. No they might agree a with them. Fuck about you. They don't care, thoughts. or they might agree with the comment, but they just don't want to be on that extreme to post it on yeah, Facebook. Man. And there's no dislike button either. So there you go. <laughs> it's, it's not even that. Like I've spent this entire time. I think that might be mine or yeah, that yours. You. Um, who the fuck is this? Two people. Charlie Murphy added me on Instagram. It's not the real guy. No. Um, I I just can't. I couldn't believe it. And then the election happens, mm-hmm. and people are still. Yeah. Like where we live, we honestly matter zero. Apparently, yeah. Even more so now. W- yeah. <laughs> like, we we are worth our vote as an entire province. Yeah. Means nothing. Mm-hmm. Same with both provinces on either side of us yeah so that's a disheartening thing because when someone's like no you have to vote and i said Mm -hmm. it last time yeah you have to vote it's almost like this it's an act of of just honoring the people that died so we can have that right because really for Mm -hmm. us here to quote chris d'elia it doesn't make a dent Mm -hmm. okay it doesn't make a fucking dent yeah in any of it Mm-hmm. And so we're sitting here in our province, like holding a flag up, like we matter. They don't give yeah. a fuck. I don't know. I don't follow politics enough to have a warranted opinion on anything. How? But the fact that, like, we're in Saskatchewan, yeah. and we voted everyone conservative, like a hundred percent. I didn't. First time since nineteen. But a bunch of people did. Like, first time since nineteen sixty-five. They said so. That it just it just speaks volumes on what our opinion is of the current government. Clearly, before there was a difference, there were liberals in place. Mm-hmm. But the fact that 
Saskatchewan has gotten screwed over so much over the years. Specifically Alberta, too. And Alberta. But I'm surprised Alberta wasn't on board with us either, but they're partly NDP. They were, they were pretty fucking close, man. NDP and I think Conservative. I don't think there was much red. There might have been like one or two spots red. But I, the, and I think that was the The thing. map's the only thing I have to reference anyway. I, sure. don't, I don't listen to the rest of the talk. I just look at the map and what I that agree. tells me. And it just speaks volumes at the end of the day. So clearly the voice is out there. The minority government thing could be interesting, but if liberals and NDP kind of team up, though, then we got to know. See, that even none of that actually matters to me because I just think everyone's fucking crazy now. Oh, for sure they are. But what it's doing is it's allowing, like, so I'm seeing people post this stuff. Yeah. And it's all ignorant. Yeah. And the reason why it's ignorant is because maybe two years ago, Mm -hmm. I might have been on board with what they're saying. Yeah. But now that I've actually experienced, no, no, I think it's more so that I'm I'm combative to a point where I always question things. Yeah, uh, and so now that I'm in an inquisitive state where it's not left, right, top down, or whatever, it's just I'm going to ask a bunch of questions to flush this thing out. Mm-hmm. So the more I've done that, the more confused I am because Actually. there's so much nuance to it Mm -hmm. but i also like nuance and yet so because i was so ignorant back then and i i I remember how ignorant i was Mm -hmm. and these people are acting like that now i'm like oh you're as ignorant as i was two years ago before i actually started asking logical questions yeah like why no one seems to be asking why uh someone put in a a post about a, a politician went into an uber and the person driving the Uber in this post, all it said was that the person in the Uber mentioned that they were an immigrant and their parents were immigrants or something like that. Yeah. And that there was silence from this politician, his wife and two kids. Yeah. And people were sharing it around like this Uber driver is a hero. Yeah. No, that Uber driver is a dick because it doesn't mention if he was provoked. It doesn't mm-hmm. mention anything. All it mentions is that because this guy knows this guy's political and yeah. not he takes what this guy believes, the politician believes, as against him. Mm-hmm. That's what he thinks, right? Yeah. He went out of his way to make it uncomfortable for this guy, his kids, and his wife. Yeah. So, no, he's not a hero because some captions were like, not all heroes wear capes. Yeah. He's a dick. Mm-hmm. He's a fucking dick because that's not how society works. Mm-hmm. And so when people are posting that, all it's done for me, at least... Which doesn't really matter to anybody else. I just now have a, my own list in mind. Mm-hmm. Like I have a list of people that I know are actually politically um, not just biased, but they're not intelligent when it comes to politics. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, and also they're hypocritical because then when you go through their entire feed, you notice everything just kind of collapses on itself. Where it's like, oh, so this doesn't go with this, but you're going to negate that and separate them. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And it's just. It's just one of these things now where my uh, my litmus test for these people of all kinds mm-hmm. on every fucking spectrum it's getting it's getting almost larger and larger and it's making it easier for me cuz then I don't have to talk to so many people. Yeah. And for me it's not a case of I see it and yes it might annoy me that I saw somebody post that. Mhm. But I don't have to comment on it, and I didn't, and I don't have to comment on it when I see this person, because mm-hmm. the people that I have on my Facebook, I yeah. will actually run into. But it's just it blows my mind how how everyone just feels like they can throw up on on Facebook, like in the public square, essentially, yeah. right? Yeah. Fucking start a podcast so you could do what I'm doing, throw up all over my own fucking feed, and people. Can uh, listen that's what Facebook's want. become, man. It's it's an avenue for it's, anything and everything. It's it's gross. Oh. That's what it is. It's gross. Don't look at it. No, I know. <laughs> and, I, and I haven't And I, I haven't for a couple of days. Um, right now, I'm at the point of transferring out my photos because mm-hmm. there's a lot of photos on there that I don't have. So then I can just delete my personal account altogether because I don't have my birthday on there. Yeah. I don't need people messaging me on my birthday. I'm not 12. And when I was 29 or 30, when I still had it, I was still a 12-year-old. That's what I was. I'm a 12 year old at 30 years old because I'm having my birthday on Facebook, so people can say happy birthday. Meh. Um, that's one way to look at. I don't think that's a that's how you feel about it. 
But that's how, yeah, like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very much trying to disconnect. But anyways, w- w- the whole spiel is the fact that these people are then turning around and complaining about security. It's like you guys are divulging very personal things, yeah. both religion and politics in a social platform, mm-hmm. which are the two things that people shouldn't talk about, mm-hmm. especially in that platform. Yeah. You're better off talking about it to somebody in person. Yeah. Because at least then you can, you have... When you're talking to somebody in person, there is that part of you that's like, okay, this person's actually in front of me, mm-hmm. and I, they can make me feel weird, I yeah. can make them feel weird, and I have to be prepared to, ins- to make somebody feel insulted or hurt mm-hmm. to their face. Yeah, That's why most of my interactions like this are in person if they're not on the podcast. Yeah. Because I'm prepared to go that way, but only face-to-face because A... It allows me to slow down my mind mm-hmm. so that I can be cognizant of both what the words that I'm going to about to say and put, and and how they're going to be received in real time. Not I'm going to put this stupid ignorant post because I for some reason want to and then someone comments on it and I can wait a bit and then throw another comment on and have this thing go on forever. Mm-hmm. Anyways, it's silly. Yeah. You saw Zombieland too. I did. How was it? It was awesome. Hold better it. than the first one? No, okay. not better, but oh, equal. Snap. But look equal. You sassy. You're just like no, <laughs> no. It can't be better. It's right, the the original always is typically one of the better ones, and then the the sequel either has to hold the candle or be just you know, or or, three candles. Yeah, I think statistically the best sequels are like The Godfather Two, Lord of the Rings, Two Towers. It's interesting you mentioned The Godfather, but yes, go yeah, go for but it. But yeah, no, Zombieland Two. Awesome. Holds it just as great a feeling as the first one. And yeah, it's great. Was it more than a feeling? Always more than a feeling. Wow. Um, that's sweet. I mm-hmm. will watch it because I did enjoy the first one. Mm-hmm. As per your recommendation. And uh, I don't know if I'll go to the theater to see it, but um, I won't yeah. point. Yeah. Um, that's sweet. Mm-hmm. And it, it's doing good. People are liking it. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those cult following type of movies. They're not yeah. like massive blockbuster by any means, but it, I was so excited the second they even announced it. And it's very much open to a third. Of course it is. But I hope it's not 10 years down the road. Uh, two year you gap. You don't want it to be 10 years down the road? No, I think that's too far. Really? Two years would be good. Two year gap would be nice kind of thing. So I see. I think it maybe it benefits from being that long. True. In its own way. I think after the first year, though, after the first time you do a 10-year gap, you've kind of established that and it's you've done it once. You don't need to revisit that. Do like a two-year gap and then you can pull it out another one. If there's if there's something there and a good story, then hey. But it could go on forever almost with the same characters and just carry on. But it was good. Great cameos. Uh, what is it? Luke Wilson and Rosario Darson. You don't have to. Cameos. Isn't that spoiler territory? No. They're on the trailers. Are they? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, they're in the trailers. No, I'm not spoiling anything. Don't worry. All right, man. Yeah. But anyways. That's cool. That's my quick little non-spoiler review. Um, Terminator Dark Fate's getting some real good reviews, and people are yes. super stoked for it, which makes yeah. me super stoked for it. Yep. And as before, you, so you, I could give a fuck. Everyone's very weary about it from the very beginning, but the fact that... It, this is a critics have given it, you know, this is the this is the sequel, the trilogy we wanted from after T2. Like, it's the best one since then. Yeah, because they have not been very good. No. Some people support the third one. But yes. Yeah. I don't like Claire Danes, so I do yeah, not she was like in that. it. Yeah. It was just weird. See, I don't mind Claire Danes, and at least for Homeland. She does very well in that. She was exceptional in Homeland. But I think, sure. I think maybe just the role didn't fit her, whatever. No, but, I've said this before on the show. Mm-hmm. She's just got one of those faces I do not like. Well, that's more of a personal thing than I. It is. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not generalizing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It is a very just like no, it's no. my own personal thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she looks. Some people just look like certain things. She looks like she has a house full of cats. But like she looks like her house is filled with cats. Mm-hmm. It's not a problem with the cat, but she looks like a cat person. Yeah. It's it's just interesting, yeah. but I I just don't care too much outside of Homeland. Relax with that don't microphone, relax. dude. Uh, I don't care for her acting aside from Homeland. I thought she wasn't very good in Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, y- you're moving around. Don't worry, don't relax. Don't just keep going. Oh my god. Um, 
I literally just watched the Bloodshot trailer, so that's cool. Mm-hmm. It was actually a really good trailer. Yeah, um, it should be interesting with it. But a lot of people are kind of up in arms about two things. Obviously, there's those uh, fanboys and fangirls out there that he doesn't look like the character in the comics. Um, a pale white face person with a red dot in his center and like oh, dark yeah. hair. I see it. So, I mean, cool outfit. So people are going to right away nitpick at that. And I mean, you're stuck between the realism of you know, putting it in the real world versus it being comic book. So yeah, but this is not going to be a really perfect hard comic to pull uh, off. Literally has a red dot yeah. in the middle. And the only thing missing is the hair part. But yeah. And I don't know that is a red dot part of his costume. Is it actually embedded into him like an Iron Man thing? I don't know. It actually looks like an Iron Man thing. Yeah. I think it's part of his body. But so I don't understand. I was trying to, I'm trying to think of the uh, the trailer now. If there was, there was one scene where he was walking and shit was going on where it looked like it was like almost paying homage to it. But. Yeah, probably. Possibly. There'll be there'll be definitely hints of it, but I, I don't think it'll be as prominent as people think. Um, I think Vin Diesel's the wrong person to have for this. They should have given it to Batista. See, why does it have to be a Jack? Like, I think someone else could have done it too. Cause, no, because this Is guy's Jack? Just fucking Jack, dude. Yeah, I don't know. This, guy's got, this guy looks like Drax without mm-hmm. the tattoos and the green. And yeah, Batista would have done it with the red dot. Like, my guess is Vin Diesel's like, no, I either need a white tank top or a black one. Or a Possibly. white t-shirt or a black t-shirt. And otherwise, I'm not doing the role. Hmm. I think that's what happened. Well, then they should have had the gall to say, okay, we're going to find someone else. Also, in his all of his contracts, he mm-hmm. has it in it so he doesn't lose. Like, I don't care for Vin Diesel at all. For the fact that in his contracts, he's not supposed to lose a fight. So, me knowing that Mm -hmm. ruins any possibility that I'm actually going to worry about this character ever. Mm -hmm. Because in his contract, he can't lose. He technically did lose a fight. Which one? Groot. He died. Then he came back. So, did he actually lose? For a bit. I think it's and it counts. wasn't actually him though. I think I think this might be a thing because he was voicing <laughs> it. Maybe yeah, I know, but I that know. is it. I was. Just, I, I I don't think even he I has any sway. Yeah, I don't think that. he has sway on the Marvel ma- <laughs> madness. The Marvel machine. Yep. Um. Anyways, the trailer look did look good though. Yeah. One other thing they're saying: way too much plot revealed. Like we didn't need to find out that he, he got betrayed. Out. Yeah. Like you should have definitely left that to the side. And like everyone was pretty pissed about that. It's like you guys gave away absolutely everything agreed assuming everyone's read the comic if you assumed everyone read the comic then it wouldn't matter so much See, i think it's the opposite i think because it's such an obscure character yeah that they felt the need to divulge too much so that people can be like in their weird way yeah. of thinking whoever cut the trailer yeah because it's always goes to most of these go to a company yeah very few times it does a director actually cut his own trailer for sure so they're probably like, well, we need to try to sell this to people. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they stopped it at the point where he finds out that he's betrayed and yeah. then literally leaving it as, what is he going to do now? Yeah. Which, based on his contracts, is means he's going to win because that's what he does now. Yeah. the I, I did like the effect, though. The effect the of nano. Like that, the nano stuff. Yeah. That was dope. Yeah. It was really cool. I think it'll be a fun movie. I don't think he delved into too deep, but I think it was, it will be a fun movie. Overall. And Guy Pierce is a good actor, so he'd play a really good villain, and it's mm-hmm. a cool concept. Like yeah. even if it gave away a lot, and I pretty much know how this movie is going to go, there is some really there's some interesting things in this. It's the journey, not the destination, as they say. Sure, right? <laughs> but you still have to discover the journey. Sure. Instead of just them slapping it in your face. Yeah. On another note, the Star Wars trailer showed us nothing. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. It was awesome. Surprisingly, I was like, oh, this looks really good. Yeah. No idea what's going on. Yeah. Lots to, to think about on that one. We don't know which way it's going to go. Palpatine returning is uh, is still... Go for Pal- Palpatine. Yeah, I don't Who knows? get that. I don't know why. I, I remember JJ had said like why he's bringing him back, but how he's bringing him back is not revealed yet. Like, is he physical form? Is he force form kind of thing? Is it like? But that's the one power, from what I understand, from other like Star Wars geeks, like yeah. people that are super into it. Mm-hmm. Um, they say that only good, like people that are fully embrace the the, the light side, side yeah. can come back as like astro form, so to yeah, speak, yeah, 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 or in that that form. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, Palpatine didn't go out that way. No, definitely not. Yeah, so um, that's going to be super interesting, unless he found a loophole in the Force. True. Or the whole thing will be that he didn't actually die in four. He's just been chilling. He was thrown. Doesn't matter. Fucking thing. Maybe he found a way to force transport himself. I don't mm, know. Maybe he's so evil mm. that he found the dark astro form. You know version. what? He orbed himself just like Leia did in last in the. That's not an orb. She Heisman her fucking whatever, self. Whatever, man. It was an orb. It was a protective force was orb it? in space. Oh, with the Heisman pose. Yeah. Yeah. That so was weird. Palpatine could have done Still that. He could have supermaned it for all we knew. And he's just been hiding this whole time. Yeah, man. Just playing it. It's chill. a long ass fucking time to just chill. Yeah. Especially Play. when Snoke was there. Hey. Chess maybe not pa- checkers. Maybe Snoke was Palpatine. Chess not checkers. I get it. <laughs> but, but at, at one yeah. point you'd be bored. Yeah. And if, if there's such a dark force around him, mm-hmm. someone would have found him. Um, I don't know. I'm super excited. Ultimately, I have faith in J.J. Abrams that he'll do it justice. He'll he'll correct what needs to be corrected from Johnson's cut, for sure. Um, the Ray parentage is one of the biggest ones that'll be definitely revealed. He's, she's she's definitely not a nobody. She's got to be somebody, and they're gonna reveal that she's always been a somebody. Well, you know what I mean, somebody of note. No, I'm saying she's always been somebody of note. Yeah, I just think that her parentage. Sorry. They wanted to. I, like I think a lot of that Ryan Johnson movie mm-hmm. was like, you thought this was important. It's not important, but <gasps> guess what? It is important. Yeah. And it's like, you didn't need to do that. Yeah. You could have just, all you needed was one crumb. Mm-hmm. And a, all of us fucking idiots would have followed that crumb all the way to the witch's fucking castle so we can be eaten while we're eating on gummy bear doorknobs. It's actually a shack, not a castle. But hey, I know what you're saying. Maybe she... Made it bigger. Whatever. Maybe Hansel and Gretel. Do they escape? They do. Maybe somebody else finds it and they just become evil. And then they turn it into a castle because they're like, this is a shack. I can't do anything with this. This is great property. I should just destroy all these trees. I'm on a. (laughs) Well, first of all, they're on a hill. So then they can have one of those crazy ass B style castles on this hill. Mm-hmm. So then they can have full range because mm-hmm. if they're higher, then they can see everything. Yeah. So, but we digress. No, I look good. I don't care. I'm like I don't care for the Star Wars stuff. If that makes sense, like mm-hmm. I don't care who's Ray, who Ray's parents are. Yeah. I don't care how Palpatine comes back. Uh, I don't care the fact that Leia's still alive. I mean, she was obviously alive in the last one, but like, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, I still contend that instead of her Heismaning all the way back to the thing, she should have just sealed the ship and died. And it would have been like, oh, she does have the force. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fucking powerful. And because the real life Carrie Fisher passed away, it would it'll be a great way to, for her to like, she literally saved these people's lives yeah. with her using the force to close up the ship so they can go. But anyways. Yeah. The Lando thing, F- fun. Yeah. Don't care. The Millennium Falcon, don't care. I think you're just over the Star Wars. We get it. Well, I think it's more so just this. It looks like it's going to be just a fun movie to watch. Uh-huh. Ultimately, what I'm saying, Have you... I don't care about this stuff, but I'm excited to watch it because it just looks, the trailer mm-hmm. looked good and it looks like fun. Mm-hmm. As opposed to the Terminator trailers that I they look like garbage. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't entice me at all. Yeah. But now I'm hearing the rumblings and I'm like, oh damn. Mm-hmm. Like a few people that I follow on like Instagram and Twitter and stuff like yeah. that, they're all like, no, like don't sleep on this movie. It is legit. It's a return oh, to okay. form. Everything like that from actual trusted humans, not yeah. rotten so, tomatoes. So not so just critics, know. IGN. No, no, no. Like We've like, heard it from people. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's good. Um, I've only heard, <clears throat> seen it from the IGN stuff. I Usually IGN is kind of my first point of contact. Or, they are, hey. I, don't trust, I follow the most. But. I don't trust any of those publications, and I'll tell yeah. you why. Mm-hmm. They're too persuaded, and and uh, much yeah. like I mentioned the litmus test. Yeah, I now have a list of any critic that shat on Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones. Yeah, I'll look at how they reviewed it and what points they brought up, mm-hmm. and most of the negative ones. Mm-hmm. And there's not a, there's not a lot of positive ones. Uh, their points where because they were looking at it from it seemed like it wasn't really a legitimate review it was just 
the, it, it, anyways, it's it's a litmus test. Yeah. And they look like they were just offended for the fact of being offended because it's an offensive comedy thing. But that's what fucking comedy is. That's what mm-hmm. he is. So a lot of these people I've just thrown away and I don't even bother with them yeah. based on that. Yeah. Because it's very easy. If mm-hmm. you're going like it, just like if someone says like The Godfather is a garbage film, mm-hmm. I do not trust your opinion on anything. Yeah. Or if they say that um, that Fight Club is a garbage film. Don't trust your opinion. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I don't care. Like, because for me, they are masterpieces. Yeah. So you saying that, I know what your thought process is when it comes to films. Mm-hmm. All right. So, anyways, yeah. A lot of the people that not didn't give the sticks and stones like a great review for the sake of giving it a great review. Yeah. Actually had valid points but they just, to what they, they just said. They just reviewed it as a, a, a proper as, critic. As honest journalism, we'll put yeah. it that way, or honest critiques. So anyways, those are the ones that were saying it was good. Yeah. But much. anyways, this it, it still looks like a lot of fun, yeah. the Star Wars one. Um, well, and it's it's kind of completing the journey everyone started back in the 70s at the end of the day. So it, it's got a... I think it's more so completing the journey that started with Force Awakens. I think what happened in the yeah. 70s ended in the, what, 80s? True. When the third one came out. or like You're invested in one. the characters too. So that's that's why I'm saying it's it's an end to that. That's it. Which is why they're calling it the end of the saga. But... That's it. There are new characters that started with The Force Awakens that we had no idea about. I get that. But you're still invested in the old characters, which make it what it is, partly. Mm. So you're saying you're invested in the legacy of the first characters. Sure, why not? More it's, so. All right. It started with the Skywalkers. It's going to end now with, with the, the Skywalkers Skywalker. involved in some way, shape, or form. So I right. think that's still that, – that says something and still. And it's called The Rise of Skywalker? Yeah, which we've discussed the Skywalker name – could mean more than one thing. Actually, we were talking Is it about, like Gina Linetti. No, you know what? Mind? We were talking about it at work, and man, they brought up a good point. It's like you know the snows in the north. Oh yeah. So it's like a bastard name of the Force. So any kids born of the Force are called Skywalkers. Wow, that's a good one, eh? That's really good. See, there you go. That's really good. You are now Skywalker. There you go, Ray Skywalker. Done. Wow. The only weird thing about that, yeah. is that they named him Snow because he was in the snow. If he was in the other side, they would be a sand. But hey, still really good. I still it's like it. Still, <clears throat> never it, mind. It checks. I'm, it it checks. Whatever. It checks. Of course it does. Yeah, because no one's really walking on the sky. But. Whatever. I think you're <laughs> taking it too literal. Go on to the next point. Then. Obviously. Um, I guess because we've already made two or three Godfather references, we yeah. can get into the Coppola stuff. Yeah. Um, so as most of you know, uh, Scorsese made his comments about the Marvel movies saying that there are like theme parks and stuff like that. Yep. Um, this one was interesting. Um, I'm going to bring up, just to give you an idea of who this this director is, okay? We're going to be talking about Francis Ford Coppola and his comments on the Marvel movies which i don't know why the marvel movies specifically like but i think he's probably talking about it like yeah. the, um, a, um as a whole right mm-hmm. the the comic movies oh his nephew's nicholas cage holy fuck i didn't know that anyways the godfather amazing apocalypse now amazing the outsiders really good godfather part three not so good godfather part two amazing um oh i forgot he did jack Lost, like, long story short, this guy is one of the top directors. He is, he is, when you're, when you, you mentioned Ford Coppola, Francis mm-hmm. Ford Coppola, I've got a fucking poster of The Godfather, two three. of them, three of them, fuck. Okay. He is a fucking director of directors. Like, Scorsese is up there. Coppola's mm-hmm. up there, right? Kubrick's up there. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go into, whether he's right or wrong. like, or, no, I'm not going to go into the to the whole battle between the auteurs, the people that call it cinema and theme rights yeah. or whatever. What my thing is going to be, and let me just bring up my notes so I get the quotes right here. And James Gunn seems to be the one that's like leading the charge against this. By the oh, way, for sure he is. So his his comment is, uh, to Scorsese's thing is when Martin Scorsese says that the Marvel pictures are not cinema, he's right because we expect to learn something from cinema. We expect to gain something, some enlightenment, some knowledge, some inspiration. Um, we learn a lot of those in all types of movies. Yeah. Um, I don't know what anyone gets 
I don't know that anyone gets anything out of seeing the same movie over and over again. Martin was kind when he said it's not cinema. He didn't say it's despicable, which I just say it is. Now, to, I believe it was John Favreau's point, yeah. he said they have the right to their opinions because they are directors of such a high caliber. Sure. For me, because they're directors, because he is a director of that caliber, mm-hmm. I think it's despicable mm-hmm. to use words like despicable mm-hmm. to describe superhero, to, to, to describe movies in general. Yeah. Unless it's like that Nation's Pride movie that's pretty much about racism yeah. and like the Ku Klux Klan, mm-hmm. that's despicable. Racism in general, despicable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, someone, uh, Roman Polanski is despicable. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, th- despicable things are despicable. Like, th- I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up the definition, and this is because I get hung up on de- uh, definitions a lot. Uh, despicable. I don't want this. No fucking hell. Okay. Deserving hatred and contempt. Okay? Mm-hmm. Somebody going out and raping somebody, that's despicable. Mm-hmm. Mi- and to Bob Iger's point, millions of people putting their heart and soul to create these films and yeah. having jobs because of yeah. because of them, and us going to view them because we enjoy them and we're following these characters grow. Mm-hmm. That's not despicable. Mm-hmm. But I say this again. Calling something like that despicable is fucking despicable. Mm-hmm. And for somebody that high up in the cinematic food chain, mm-hmm. you like you would expect them to fucking know their words mm-hmm. and know how to use words properly. Because that's some of the most ignorant, despicable shit you can say. People got grew up on things like this and so sorry man you have your right to an opinion but you really got to work on your words Mm -hmm. that's my take on that i don't even give a fuck about everything else because yes they're not philomas Mm -hmm. they're not the godfather no one's really comparing them to that yeah okay scorsese calls them theme park rides fine I really dislike people using despicable mm-hmm. or using, sorry, I really hate people that use words that are used to describe other words or other things like racism, for instance, mm-hmm. to describe something like superhero movies. Mm-hmm. Fuck off. That's my thing. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's just dumb. I don't understand why both of them are coming out of the woodwork now after basically Coppola has been under a rock for how long? Number one, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Scorsese, semi-active, and they decide to... Well, he's got the Irishman coming up. It's fine, but he's semi-active at the end of the day, right? For the most part. Yeah, semi-active, I'm correct. Uh, and they come out of the woodwork now after an 11-year run of all these superhero movies. Like, you come out of the woodwork now. Mm-hmm. Like, why? Just to me, go under back under your rock. We thank you for your contribution. Not no. Go, keep go, making films. Keep making films too. But like, why are you discrediting at people so so harshly? Like that's the problem. He's discrediting everybody's work. You're discrediting Stan Lee, a man who created this world and all the and all the elements behind it. Right, but and he may not even give a fuck. That's fine. But I'm just I'm telling you, he's just discrediting all the work. It, it's a trickle effect. You're not just saying the movies. You're trickling down to what the ideas are because you don't you think the ideas are despicable and they should, what should they have stayed as comics like as long as they didn't touch your realm? I'm sorry, which has been I, touched a no, thousand. No, no times No offense, before. I don't think every movie should be a mob movie. We love the ones that have come out, which is what Coppola and Scorsese will always be known for: mob movies. Well, Coppola with Apocalypse Now and some other stuff. But anyways, really dark, gritty, mob like movies. Fucking, yeah, I'm telling well, you right and, now. And he's back gonna, then, uh, and I forget who had pointed. I think it was James Gunn. Yeah. He's like. 
those films were looked at as despicable yeah. because they actually depicted real people getting fucking shot in the face. Yeah. And people being sexist and Honestly, racist and all that stuff. And romanticizing like, the mob life. Yeah, man. Goodfellas is all about romanticizing it. Yes, there was a gritty end to it all. It was a depressing end for sure. For yeah. Sh- yeah, yeah. But at the end of that, you, yeah. you love the idea. Henry Hill, the way he described it and everything went on, you're like, man, this is a great life. Dude, that first, <laughs> that opening, the yeah. opening. I always wanted quarters, to be a gangster. Done. Just amazing. Yeah. Everything about it. So when you watch The Godfather too, yeah. like, I still haven't decided if I like the first one or the second one better. It's really hard. I love them both. Godfather? Yeah. Yeah, man. No, they're both good. They're both amazing. But it's just like, no, what? like people looked at those yeah. as despicable. Like, but I don't even know if they use that word yeah. because that's just a word. And I might be just hung up on the word itself because, again, like Favreau said, you guys could say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, they don't care. They. But I really dislike, like I've called mumble yeah. rap garbage. Yeah. And so I'm trying not to be hypo- hypocritical because I don't know if garbage is too bad of a word, but I love Mars Bar, but my rapper for my Mars Bar is garbage, and I could just throw it away. And it's I've the mumble rap that I've listened to, I've just thrown away and never listened to again and yeah. don't ever need to listen to it again. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's despicable. Yeah. And I don't understand why words like that aren't mm-hmm. being used for things that are actually despicable. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is because it then lessens the use of the word because now it's like, oh, so something that's that's to describe that something that you should hate or have mm-hmm. extreme contempt for yeah. or have contempt for is both treating another human being like a piece of shit, raping somebody, sexism, racism, all sort of, all the isms or whatever, yeah. and also watching a Marvel film mm-hmm. or a superhero film. It's a Marvel film, as far as I'm concerned. There, it seems like they're going after the Marvel films because that's that's the that's the word that's what Scorsese Listen, started. Let's off. be honest; that's been our world for in, for entertainment. So and anything coming up, it's been every year. You look forward for that Marvel movie, and again, it's it's just the discredit behind it to use words like that. That's all it is. And I didn't even think about it the way that Bob Iger did. The millions of people that we sit there and li- watch the credits over and over again yeah. that are involved in this have jobs because of it, mm-hmm. put like everything they have behind it. Yeah. And it's like, come on, man. Yeah. Just just chill the fuck out. Basically. Um anyway, so that's anything on that? That's Nothing more other than that. It's going to keep going. It's just, it's just going pretty going sad. That's all. It, it's yeah. Like I said, using stuff like that, that is, I would consider that despicable on mm-hmm. his part. Um, yeah. Why the hell does Cardi B have to be in Fast 9? I don't understand that. I don't know. And in what capacity? Who knows? Fuck do I know, dude. They had Rita Ora in the seventh one, and all she did was just call the race. Yeah. That Dom and she might. That's all my Cardi B be good for, a just cameo. That's race. it. Yeah. Just a cameo. I, I think the only quote unquote acting she did was on the reality TV show Love and Hip Hop. Yeah, maybe. And she, well, she did uh, the Hustlers I, now. Is she on Hustlers? She's, oh, she did the movie Hustlers? Yeah, with Did J-Lo. you watch it? No. I want to. I don't think it's worth going to the theater personally. You don't think so, hey? No. I don't. Like, I haven't gone to a movie, movie, movie in a long time, so. That's a streaming movie, in my opinion. Last movie I saw was Spider-Man Far From Home yeah. months after it actually came out because I had a free ticket, yeah. so I'm going to need to. Oh, no, Joker. What am I talking about? Speaking of which, highest R-rated film of all time. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And that Ryan Reynolds thing yeah. was perfect. <laughs> oh, man. How does he do it? He just yeah. has a fucking... I could hear that whole meme completely. <laughs> you mother... <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so happy. Even mom and dad, uh, the other night when I'd come to... Me and Soph came for supper. Mm. And my and they were showing... They, they were talking about the Joker and what it's yeah. doing to people or whatever. And... Mom's like, what is the deal with this thing? And so I tried to break it down as best as I could. Yeah. And I'm like, it's just polarizing because people are fucking pissed off about everything that they see. And they think it's glorifying nihilism, which you could say maybe it does. But mm-hmm. it's a self-actualizing movie that happens to touch on something other than rainbows and marshmallows. Yeah. It's a hard, hard movie. Yeah. I'm not saying it's an easy movie. I'm not saying it's going to make you feel good. It's going to make you feel really hard. But sometimes and you just confused. need to see it. Confused. Yeah. Theory wise. Yeah. Because mo- the more it's coming out. I don't like that they revealed one of the theories. I really Which don't. Which one was that? The, so- the Sophie one. I'm glad they did actually. I don't. No, I'd rather I'd rather it be ambiguous. I'm I'm happy that remain. she didn't die. 
I'm happy that she didn't die. Sure. I don't need to know. I I would rather f- be guessing forever. Did he do it or did he not? You think so, hey? Yeah. Hmm. The, the, honestly, half of, half of the movie is the fact that everything's left unanswered. How many theories have come out that you're like, what the hell? And that's what entices people more. Mm-hmm. Not more, but just as much as watching what you watched and then looking back on it and you think you had this figured out and you're like, no, I'm way out to lunch. No, that part's fun for sure. But yeah. I, I think I think it's that one little bright light in the, in the movie that's filled with darkness sure. where he didn't kill that little guy. Yeah. And he didn't kill Sophie. Sure. Because they never did anything to him. For sure. Right? So... That it's it's that just that little bright spot in the whole thing. Mm-hmm. He killed his own fucking mother. Yeah, right. And but he didn't. I I, I don't know. For me, I, I I saw that and I was legitimately like happy that they had mentioned it. Yeah. But I yeah. get where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. But we go from the highest grossing to Gemini Man that loses seventy five million dollars. Yeah. So he's not had a good run in the sci fi game, dude. After that, after Earth with you know, with his son, that was Ugh. another bomb. See, and Gemini Man was supposed to be supposed to be very good. I don't know what the deal was. I think they lost money because of what they did, how they filmed it. Because their whole nobody thing, likes the movie. Yeah, that's part of it too. <laughs> like, but no, but we're saying the amount that it's losing. Yeah, the deficit is partial, partly because of what equipment they use. The big their big thing was that they shot it in 4K, 120 frames per second, and that uh Will Smith gets twenty million dollars a film. That too. Whatever. I'm just saying a contributing factor. Can it, let me finish it, my it, thought. Yeah. Let me finish my thought. So yeah, I'm going there. So the the fact that they use this technology and their big thing was saying that, you know, most of the theaters in the States don't actually have the proper equipment to show this to its full potential. So maybe some frames were choppy, wasn't as clear. I don't know. I'm just saying it's a contributing factor to the deficit, along with the movie not being very good. I think that's adorable. And you're not wrong. I'm saying, though, mm-hmm. it's the whole thing and the yeah. fact that nobody likes the film. And so they've spent all this money. Not only that, there's probably a 20 to $25 million budget just for marketing. Then you've got Will Smith that you have to pay sure. out. And the, all the CGI that yeah. has to be done. All of that contributes. I just It's it's definitely not just the technology, though. It's the I whole... Didn't, I didn't say it was. I just said brutal. it's a contributing factor. Of course, but everything's a contributing factor. That's why I'm saying that's an adorable argument, but everything contributes to the Thanks. fact that you lose that much money. But then there's also the thing of like, yeah, he maybe just that's that star power is not working anymore. Not, in those not films. just Will Smith's in general. The star power is not what brings people to the theaters. Mm-hmm. I think that's a better conversation to have over things like Gemini Man because Joaquin Phoenix is not it, he is a household name, mm-hmm. but yes, he's no. not a Will Smith. No. He's not of The Rock. He is this. Guy that picks really good roles almost always, and Joker makes bank, mm-hmm. right? And like, there's a reason for that, I think. Sure. And it has nothing, and it, and it doesn't have anything to do with just the lead character. But there is, there was a driving force behind it that was led by people that went and saw it, and people really wanted to see it and mm-hmm. and felt something. It touched a nerve. It it put its pulse on. It put its finger on the pulse of humanity, mm-hmm. and these things that are not just not just the fact that it's polarizing. Mm-hmm. It's because it there is a large majority of people that are gravitating towards it. Mm-hmm. Whereas Gemini Man, no, nothing there. I had no interest in seeing it. I don't need Will Smith no. to bite yeah. himself, but for sure, maybe adorable is a mean comment. Yeah. There is a lot of technology involved with. I'm just saying their big thing was that technology. Like they were focusing on that. So I clearly they spent before. money on that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, so for sure. Well, we know that. There sure. you go. Um, uh, I'm trying to see what else What else I have for notes. I had Cardi B in Fast 9. Oh, I guess they've been wanting John Wick to be in the Fast and Furious movie. That yeah. should never happen. Yeah, I don't think he'd fit. Of course, it's not it worth fit. it. No, it's not worth his time. No, because he's gonna like it, it will. I think it'll just be him like killing just them all. Doing it. <laughs> no, just doing it for a paycheck. Really, like what yeah. the fuck is he gonna do in Fast Furious? Yeah, is he gonna come in as a villain and then become their family again? Because they yeah. become, 
He should the run. Fast crew. He should run the Russian street gangs. Oh man, perfect. And just be a villain. Yes. But the problem is, like I mentioned before, Vin Diesel can't lose a fight. So what's the point? Yeah. Like even if John Wick himself comes up, stabs him in both of the eyes, and cuts his balls off, he'll come up in Fast Ten and being like, "I just needed a Corona," and then everything's fine again. And then they'll get a Dell to run the races next time. Yeah. Fucking John Wick, such he's the coolest. Then you're gonna go to the Fast franchise. I mean, he's not. I'm just saying they've been yeah. wanting to get him there, yeah. and I just think that'd be silly. Like it just would not make sense. I thought I saw something creeping over the blanket, and that mm-hmm. freaked me out. Sure, like All a right. giant spider. Go on, relax, man. New Hocus Pocus for Disney Plus. Really? Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. I feel great about it. You I know what? If the they they should have the original Sanderson sisters, number one. I think they will. And then you know what? And them terrorizing a new age group of kids could be good. Yeah, but then well, the problem with that is that it turns into it again. Sure. Where every few years, like every bunch of years, they come back. Or it's going to be prequel. Yeah. Because technically in the last one, they kind of died, right? Yeah. 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 You're right. They kind of died. So I don't know how they would bring them back. Prequel sounds about right. Or someone decides to like some cult, cultist like that follows them, that Absolutely. hears about the Sandersons and finds a way to bring them back kind of yeah. thing. Because um, they didn't have their book anymore, right? Right. Holy shit, you remember way more than I, I just remember yeah. liking it. Oh, I is one of my favorites. That fucking singing scene with Je- Sarah Jessica Parker, yeah. that still freaks me out. Yeah. That is so creepy and all <laughs> the kids just start walking out like towards the fuck that was creepy as Ooh, shit, man. Yeah. Man, and she- could be interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. I it's not one of the, you know usually when you hear the remake you're like, "No, don't touch yeah. it." But this one yeah, it's you been could a see while, it. dude. You could see it. Yeah. You could see it. They're already re- bringing back every Halloween thing known to man every single Halloween. Yeah. We're going to be living in an era where they have Halloween 96. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, And, and we're going <laughs> to be sitting there and be like, what's going to happen now? Yeah. And if fucking Vin Diesel is cast, we know he's not going to yeah. die because it's in his fucking contract. Yeah. Speaking of which, have you seen those parody movies on YouTube? Porn parodies? No, no, no. Oh, okay. YouTube. No. Not you porn. <laughs> Sicko. <laughs> Prevert. Prevert. Uh, no, they're called the Slash Street Boys. And they do parodies of like all the. <laughs> Netflix yeah. doesn't even have my phone number. Awkward. You're Netflix. So if you get a text message from a random phone and it says your Netflix account has been restricted, please update your billing information. And you've never given them your phone number. Yeah. Joke's on you. You don't pay for your Netflix. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, no problem. High five. Uh, but anyways, these Slash Street Boys, they basically, they dress up like the main characters, like Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Freddy, J- Freddy, uh, Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Uh, the Ghostface guy, Leatherface. Ghostface from Wu-Tang? Wu-Tang? No, Scream. Yeah. Uh, and they do like parodies of like the Backstreet Boys. Okay. They do, they did like Careless Whisper. Amazing. They did uh, still Faith. my number one karaoke song. Look up Slash Street Boys on YouTube, and I, I they do oh, a pretty good it. job. Backstreet Boys, yeah, Slash there you Street go. Boys. Yeah, oh. but yeah, if you're lo- looking for a good laugh, the Slash Street Boys on YouTube is there pretty it is. good. Slash Street Boys, yeah. As long as you're bloody, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll kill you that away. Yeah, slashing bodies. Wow. Friends with no faces. Yeah. I got friends with no faces. I yeah. like that. See, you can hear it. Yeah, totally. That's great. Yeah. But the the Careless Sister one that uh Careless that, Sister. That's a good one. <laughs> I just listened to that. But yeah. Oh man. Just for a good laugh for parody, they do a very good job, I think. And right around Halloween. Dude, parodies are the best. Yeah. When parodies are done right, I'm so happy. Like they just made oh, yeah. like that Joker trailer that we talked about last week. Yeah. I've watched it eight times since then. <laughs> Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. I love yeah. shit like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what else we got? The Wonder Woman trailer. Has that been released? Uh, yeah, it like, got, not it released, actually, but it's got, it got leaked boom. that it's going to, we're going to release on December, early December. Nice. So, but this is, doesn't come out till February. Is that what it is? In March, something like that. I don't know. It's going to be a while. It's been announced for quite a bit, but. Oh. Hmm. Uh, no, I'm super stoked for that. Yeah. Pedro Pascal is going to be in that, which is going to be. Oh, nice. Trey is interesting because mm-hmm. um, Pedro Pascal is awesome. Yeah. Even in that shitty Kingsman 2, he was good in it. Yeah. I really didn't like that movie. Fair enough. 
I rewatched it recently. Okay. Just to see, like, just get it off. And There's like, elements. There are elements that you probably still enjoy, but ultimately, yeah, it kind of falls a little flat. Oh. And like, I felt bad because Mark Strong didn't Strong didn't do anything. Yeah. And all they had him do was kill himself. Yeah. Because of his dad, and it's like, yeah, but you never established that you felt like you said that you felt bad, yeah. but you never established that it pained you so much that you're willing to do that. Mm-hmm. It's just weird. Yeah. It's and I super weird. Um, let's get looking through Kevin Feige taking over. We talked about that last week. Oh, did you? And Jeff Loeb was the guy that ended up yeah. stepping down. That's yeah, that yeah. At the Jeff Loeb stuff. Yeah. So because Feige took control of his whole division, Jeff Loeb's like, I'm leaving. Which I get. So was was uh, Jeff Loeb technically going to be above Feige, or basically did he did Kevin Feige nope. be given got his job? Like they nope. basically pushed him out. No, nope. he was he was in charge of. So what happened was the the two divisions split: movies and TV. Uh, okay, I believe Pearl Mutter was the original guy, and then I think yeah. Jeff Loeb got in. Mm-hmm. But and but Feige had the movies, and that's all he was doing. Okay, okay. So everything was copacetic. Sure, you got your side. You got my. I got my side. Yeah, done. Mm-hmm. We're good. But now he's the headmaster for everything, for everything. And so there's probably a feeling of like from Jeff Loeb's side. It's like, oh, I am now going to be negated yeah, because Kevin Feige brought the MCU to life, really. Yeah. And so he is now the god at Disney. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's a smart move. Him stepping down. Yeah, the only shitty thing is, is that with the Marvel TV division, it's been okay. Daredevil yeah. has been its biggest one. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I, I think Kevin Feige obviously being put in charge. I know we talked about it. It's it's just for the cohesion of the entire universe to go together. Not that they couldn't work it out, mm-hmm. but he basically would have gone to a meeting with this guy and said, "Okay, you got to scrap everything you've done." Right. For the we, most part. We're we're above you. We make more money. Like yeah. he would pull rank for sure. Yeah. And I and I Iger would totally definitely see back Feige for sure. Yeah. He's brought him billions of dollars. Yeah. How would he not? It'd be dumb if he didn't back up. Yeah. Which is one point that I forgot to mention when we were talking about the Scorsese thing. So mm-hmm. Scorsese goes to Netflix to make the Irishman. Right. Netflix is notorious for being awesome and just giving them giving their people money. That's mm-hmm. why they have so much original content, right? Yeah. Or so much stuff coming out on Netflix. Um so my guess is the comments from Scorsese spawn from the fact that he probably wasn't able to get as much funding for the Irishman because yeah. the theater the studios are looking at like, well how much can we actually make on this? Mm-hmm. versus what if Robert De Niro wore a jet pack and floated through the air while shooting a gun that had bullets with Al Pacino's face on them. Right? That could have been a pitch. And they're going to be like, that's bankable. (laughs) (laughs) But he's like, "Uh, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm going to Netflix. funny you use that term. I know. Promotions 13. Yeah, I was hoping you were going to do that. Fingers crossed. Uh, Whoops. Whoops. Dude, ever since I got back from Vegas, when I was in Vegas, yeah. I wasn't like thrilled to be there. Yeah. Now that I'm back, I'm like, I want to fucking go back. And the fact that I've learned how to play craps. Yeah. And I there's not a single craps table in our province anymore. Oh, they took them all out, dude. They took them the fuck out. Huh. I mean, I'm talking my friend, friend of mine. I'm like, what? Do we drive like six and a half hours to go play craps? And we're like, no, that'd be dumb. <laughs> But we were close we're to gonna driving. Do it. We were gonna, we were actually going to drive to like Moose Jaw, like half an hour away to go. But they oh. took it out of there too. And oh. so he looked it up. They've taken it out of everywhere. Clearly, wasn't doing very well in these markets. I guess so. Fuck, man. I don't know. It just sucks because yeah. everyone was screaming and they're having such a good time playing craps. Yeah. Where just, everybody doesn't know your name. That's the wrong song for the totally different subject. But Ted Danson did get arrested for a climate change rally Awkward. today. Awkward. And Jane Fonda, super funny. I saw that before I drove over here. I was oh. like, well, damn. And so I guess that somewhat ties into your cheers thing. Sure. Uh, oh, speaking of shit, sure, I've been watching Shit's Creek. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, really? Don't know why I haven't started until now, but yeah. um, uh, Ashley mentioned it to me. Yeah. I was over at Ethan Ashley's a while visiting Georgie, and she's like, I, it's really good. Hmm. And I'm like, I've passed by it a bunch of times. Yeah. Holy shit! Right now, I haven't been able to commit to anything new. Um, I watch. 
blew through the new season of Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Uh, so it's I'm, good, ca- I'm catching up with Riverdale. But Peaky, Peaky Blinders is amazing. No, I know it is. Was a new season good? Oh yeah, very good. Okay. And of course, cliffhanger, bastards. Always. And we won't get another season for another year and a bit. But oh anyway, my God. Uh, and I've just been rewatching The Office. That's Amazing. it. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, still so good. It's so funny because uh, my sister in law is watching it, mm-hmm. and she she can't handle the episodes. She's like, Michael Scott. Oh my god, Michael. he's so dumb. And, oh my god, this is going on. Oh like, yeah. Just lean into it, man. Like, stop trying to be whoever you're. She committed and kept watching. Oh yeah, she's oh, okay. like on season six. Like she's oh, been okay. She's almost kind of, shit, she's catching up to me. I'm on seven. And, <laughs> and the best was that. So this is our first time watching. Yeah, her. yeah, yeah. And the best was when she then when uh, her and Pete had come over. Yeah. The. Uh, the dinner party episode oh, was wow. on. And Soph and I just looked at each other and we like the look on her face while watching it, we're laughing our asses off yeah. and she's just cringing. <laughs> so good. That episode, yeah. I used to skip that episode because it made me so uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Now I just, I'm in. You said man. the other one that you skip is uh, oh, Scott's Tots. I still skip it. Fuck Scott's Tots. That's I, such a, I watched that's it. That's such a stupid, you know what that did? I think it. I think it made the Michael Scott character like so bad. That's true. Like it actually made him a bad person. Yeah, masking it behind a good intention. Mm-hmm. Whereas everything else leading up to that was great, and it's just like it was unnecessary, man. Yeah, so mad. Same with the money episode. So the money, the episode where he got a second job, and then Oscar shows yeah. him that like that scary line is the whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all started with them saying that they had to sell their cars so that Jan can get the Porsche. Well, he, they he never mentioned it. it was a Porsche. I think you found out that later. No, no, no. He, when he was when she picked them up from his job. yeah, you saw that it was a Porsche. Yeah, yeah, but you, yeah. you when he talked about it, all he said is that was after. Mm, I thought it was before. Anyways. He got the job first. Oh, okay. Then he quit that job because he screwed up his PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he was having his money issues, right? right, right. Um, and that's when he wanted to like go on the train and leave and all that sure. stuff, right? And then the dinner party was shortly after. Yep. But it started with implying that Jan has been eating up his money because he never had these issues before Jan. Yeah. And so he, Jan picks him up in a Porsche that they still have. She was supposed to go to yoga, but she ended up staying home and drinking wine and still driving there. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden they turned it halfway to where they just have Michael renting a bunch of DVDs and magic sets and all that, or magic sets and all that. And yeah. him being the reason why he has no money. Yeah. And, and so when I'm looking at it now, I'm like, they flipped something here and it's kind of silly, mm-hmm. but you know, it's a minor thing but and we've gone totally off topic. Very from, much so. I don't even know where our topic was. Um, I think that's it. I don't know. Yeah. I think that's it this week. I really got nothing else. Me neither. It's a quiet week. Yeah. Who, oh, oh mm. yeah. I'm trying it's to see. It's kind of a lull right now for movies coming out too. Yeah, it's true. I don't think there's anything for a couple of weeks yet. Well, and I got to figure some shit out because, uh, We've got in a couple of weeks that there's this event going on on, fr- on the Friday, mm-hmm. and uh, and we got to figure out what I'm going to release that week. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to skip that event. It's, it's a list. podcasting event, yeah. And so, Terminators November first. I might have to skip it and then record and then deal with the uh, repercussions after. Mm. But oh, Red Rum! I don't know if I watch that. I it might be too much for me. Anyways, Shit's Creek is unbelievable. Is really good, and Dan Levy and Catherine O'Hara are yeah. just the best. Yeah, <laughs> they are just the best. So that's it. It's another week. Yep, yep. Another week, another episode. Uh, thank you for tuning in uh, again. Really, really appreciate all the new people that have tuned into us. Um, I hope you continue to. And uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F podcast at gmail.com. Uh, in that email, obviously, you can send us reviews from stuff that you've seen um, that you just want to get out there. And uh, would re- we would really like a, a rating on an Apple podcast. I know we have one right now, but any rating would be great. And if it's positive, obviously, we'd love those. If it's negative, then it would be awesome if you just like emailed them and been like, hey, man blah 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 and whatever your negative comments are um i really appreciate it um and uh yeah you can on instagram the f word podcast and uh the lazy canadian which is anthony's meme page if you like memes thank you again for tuning into the best podcast you'll never know i'm g i'm bass and we are out (laughs) 